Hello guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and uh, I'm working on this beautiful uh, Eastern White Cedar. Actually, this tree was collected in uh, the seaside, actually, lakeside of uh, Lake Michigan, up north, four hour up north. As you can see, the tree has uh, a very good character, a lot of that wood, uh, interesting and compact foliage, uh, some beautiful uh, shari, natural opening here. You have to know that this tree grow in swamp, in the uh, side of the lake, so most of the time we find a lot of roots uh, around the trunk because uh, the trunk is basically buried in the mud. So some branches died uh, because the harsh condition is very cold uh, in winter and also this tree that is basically sitting in the ground frost uh, until uh, spring and uh, what we have here is uh, a little tree with a lot of character nice deadwood so i will start the cleaning the cleaning uh, all the deadwood and the trunk uh, and then i will make my decision for styling So I just uh, did some cleaning of the dead wood, uh, showing uh, some nice detail of the trunk, especially this section here where the tree split uh, in two. There are some nice and compact branches, uh, some other that are very long. I really like to create something small and powerful to really highlight this section. The other option was uh, to keep all these uh, long uh, kind of uh, trunks uh, and create a multi-trunk uh, but I'm feeling uh, that if I do that uh, I really take away the interest from this uh, lower compact section of the trunk so I will remove uh, the long branch uh, create the dead wood and then basically I will use uh, only these branches uh, to create a nice and compact tree bending over this section to recreate the apex uh, and then creating almost like a semi-cascade down with these branches here. I just finished uh, taking care of the gene of the tree, creating also a little shard in this position so we can really focus uh, on the nice uh, transition and taper of the trunk, the little trunk. Now uh, I'm looking at the new angle, I want to move the tree creating like a semi cascade and have this section rebuilding the top in this position. These two branches that can be my two lower branches and still have uh, this part uh, that uh, is not useful. I always, uh, I'm always very careful on removing too much. I like to go through my creating process before, also because here I want to maintain the live line uh, going up to these two branches, and now I can really say, okay, I can remove this section, create another gene, and I have everything I need uh, to create uh, my nice uh, little tree. So when I style a bonsai and I get to the structural wiring, 
I need to have a strategy. What I mean is uh, I need to know before I wire the position of uh, my structural branches to be able to wire properly and at the moment I position the branch the wire can tighten down and hold the position. This is a pretty flexible tree but still is a Yamadori, probably is a very old uh, tree so I need to be nice and careful on wiring these branches uh, in the correct direction in order to hold the tension while I'm compressing the structure of the tree. So basically I have one, two, three and four main branches. I need to think about the direction of them and I will use the gin close by the branches in order to create my anchor. So I will anchor on the gin, wire the branch in the proper direction again and again until all of them will be structurally wired and then starting from inside and going outside I will wire all the secondary and tertiary branch. At the end of the work because the idea is uh, to repot the tree and uh, put down in cascade is already four years in this box so we can easily slip out uh, in a nice uh, container put in the correct angle and set uh, the uh, shape of the tree. Now that I wire all the tree and I have to tilt the position, I take a chance, take the tree outside, repotting these uh, first bonsai pot to have uh, the perfect angle to create my cascade and then I will set the branches. Something that uh, I'd like you to notice uh, is that my client stick uh, some iron uh, nails uh, into the pot uh, and uh, you can see that uh, rusting uh, the iron uh, really get in connection uh, with the soil and uh, the roots uh, that seems uh, really loving uh, the extra iron that uh, you know, penetrate the soil uh, 
from uh, the rust uh, of uh, the nails. So something that I find out very interesting, uh, interesting uh, while uh, cleaning the tree is that basically the original root ball, as uh, uh, most of the time happen uh, in some trees, died. Uh, you see, and the new roots uh, from the upper part uh, of the base uh, start growing. It will be very easy to bend them now that they are clean. And also, you can see this stump uh, basically. This is the original tap root uh, that was growing inside uh, of the water that was uh, chopped uh, when the tree was collected that also we can go through and uh, eliminate in order to be able to put uh, the tree in the new container. So what we can say is basically we have uh, an air layer, a natural air layer of the tree always regrowing on top of itself uh, because uh, in the water there is no oxygen so the roots uh, tend to grow uh, the final roots tend to grow in the upper part uh, and uh, obviously this area of the trunk uh, is always uh, the stronger one to reshoot uh, new roots out
the final product, uh, I think I was able uh, lifting up this as an apex uh, and also creating a second one here, both coming uh, from the split uh, and opening up. Uh, uh, they create uh, a beautiful uh, visual tension uh, and uh, a nice uh, uh, dynamism uh, focusing the attention to the focal point uh, of the tree that is the central part where the trunk break in nature plus uh, now getting rid and cleaning uh, some of the old trunks uh, we have a beautiful uh, uh, side here uh, nice with a lot of dead wood uh, and uh, where the tree start uh, is uh, uh, cascading movement uh, down to the right. Uh, I reset a little bit uh, all the, the branches uh, in order to hold the foliage. Uh, it's not easy to create uh, geometry with the Easter white cedar uh, because uh, most of the foliage is very floppy but uh, along the year we can get nice pads, uh, hit the tree nice and prune, create more green masses uh, and uh, really uh, make this tree nice and mature probably in a very short amount of time. Easter white cedar is a very generous type of tree. I also uh, repot the tree. As you could see from the image, I haven't cut any roots, just the old uh, top root that was uh, chopped uh, when the tree was collected. Put in a nice uh, soil that also little uh, um, old uh, moisture. They love water, we have to remember that. So when we grow the trees, uh, we have to be very generous on watering and they will produce uh, a lot of nice foliage. So I would say for this episode uh, is all. I hope you enjoy this transformation as I uh, did uh, working on this tree. Thank you so much for following this video. See you at the next.